Okay, it's that nice and neat shit. I'm about to kick it off. Get a clap. Get a off clap. Somebody, okay. Sitting on the lawn. Sitting on the lawn. I'll be the one to take the risk. Oh. Oh. Get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and make a I'm plan. Never mind my mother getting uh, old now. Uh, I don't time. Uh, Gotta keep uh, a okay, couple for the road to rest and left behind. Duke's move, yeah. Uh, yeah. Duke's nice move, uh. Duke's move, uh. Nice and neat shit, uh. Not from the hood, not from the street shit. Yeah. Got my girl Vic, and I'm chillin' smooth. Duke smooth, yeah, take your ass back to school. Yeah. My nigga, oh, yeah, he on the throne. You gon' follow my nigga where he go, uh -huh. That's my nigga line, uh, with the essentials. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bro. All right, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Victoria Monet. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan, and this is another episode of Nice and Neat. What up, y'all? Hold on, hold on. We got <laughs> we got a very, very, very special guest in the building today. We have Grammy nominated artist, and Sheesh. just like honestly, the 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 pin of the industry. <laughs> we have her Hello. here, and she is also a solo artist herself. Thank we have Miss Victoria Monet in What's the building. Good? What's, What's up? Good? I got a question for you. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up for Victoria, yeah, I, man. I got, a, I got a question for Victoria. You know, we all, we all got like our own thing, right? Absolutely. Like just whatever it is, we all got our own thing. Obviously, as y'all can see, Duke got the freestyle ability. <laughs> <You know? laughs> whatever whatever I was. You know, O's doppelganger will be the dreads. If you see him without dreads, you'd be shocked. And we always see Victoria in the brown. brown. Are yeah. using brown hearts. Yeah. What yep. does the brown mean to you? Um, honestly, I feel like it feels like home. My mom used to use a lot of brown decorations. Um, there was a lot of brown in our home. And I also feel like I need to wear it because there's a, a industry full of white. Mm. <laughs> so mm. I'm just always trying to represent wow. how I can. So no pink hair ever. <laughs> no, maybe I don't see it in my future, but, um, I don't say never, but yeah. not right now. So sure. it's really earth tones, right? It's not yes. just brown, right? Yes, it's earth tones. It's earth tones. Well, yeah. I, I feel like we see you in brown more than anything. For sure. My closet, when you walk in, it's like, my shit. I don't you know, know where the hell you got this brown leather from. That's incredible. It's crazy. <laughs> and and, and they, they uh, what you call these stacks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. You brown is what? interesting. Yeah. It's Brown's crazy interesting. because, <laughs> like, I was wearing brown for years, and then when I got pregnant, fashion went brown like mm. all of the Neutrals, places were yes. yes selling brown and i'm like i can't yeah. do none of this stuff yeah, yeah, but yeah. i was so mad but we're back <laughs> we're back no nah, i think that brown is one of those colors it's just like yo i'm tired of wearing black but i don't want <laughs> to be the loud. next darkest thing <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean i don't want to i don't want to be too colorful and i'm tired of wearing black and gray is just too like a little bit too neutral mm -hmm. yeah so like br that brown beige tan yeah. color that's kind of where you know, we're kind of starting to lean. It's a nice so, sweet spot. It, it's winning right now, too. Sure. Like, even you see Jalan got that, 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 exactly. that color. That, you know, like, that's like a vibe right, right now yeah. all, all together. Thank you. I appreciate it. Also it feels yeah, yeah. very grown. I put, like, hey, I yeah. pulled this out, you know, just for this episode. Round you know, of applause. This was touched away for a little bit. <laughs> it looked like you just took it out the package today, though. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> I, I put it on and the tag was still on. I yeah, had to pull it off. Yeah, crazy up in there. So, what's up, Jalan? Why are we here today, man? What we what we talking about? you know what? We have... We have Miss Victoria Monet on the episode today. And, you know, you went through so many transitions in your career. Yeah. So many transitions in your career. Just from the little bit of research that I've done on you, but also knowing you personally, being able to see you go from, like I said, being the, the pen of the industry <laughs> to now transforming to being a solo artist, but also being a mother as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And within, within your artistry, <laughs> Within your artistry, bring a motherhood into your artistry as well. Like that's something that I've been able to see you do constantly. All of yeah. us, all of us mm -hmm. have been able to see you constantly evolve your career. So we're gonna be sitting here today with Victoria <laughs> Monet. We're gonna be talking about just the evolution of your career and just yeah. being able to reinvent yourself yep. and just like how you consistently do that. Yeah, it's impressive. It's, well, it's extremely you. impressive. <laughs> oh yeah, thank it's extremely you. impressive. So we see. I see you got a little bit of a church background. Yeah. Tell me about that. Tell us about that. Um. Well, my <laughs> my grandpa, my earliest memories of church is my grandpa working in the computer areas of the church. So he would always be back there fixing stuff. My mom ended what, up. What was your grandpa's name? Daniel Chester. 
Chastain? Chastain. Chastain. Yes. Brother Chastain. In Brother the, Chastain. In the, in the media department. Brother Chastain. Deacon Chastain. Brother in the media department. <laughs> in the media department. In the media, in the media in ministry. In the media, in the media ministry. If y'all want to take from today's message, go see Brother Chastain. <laughs> in the media ministry. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, I remember being there before and after hours. Um, musically, I was in the church choir, which is an easy place to start. It's um, a place where you can blend in a little bit, like mm. play the background, but still be a part of something. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom is now a deaconess at the church. My stepdad is a deacon at the church. So there's a lot of evangelists. Yes, okay. church history. Okay. I got a question for you. Um, <laughs> you said you said you started off in the church choir because it's like an easy way to blend in. But yeah. your, your voice is, is such a beautiful and amazing voice, and it stands out so much. Like Thank so, like you. at what point did you s- say, yo? I'm a little bigger than this choir or I need to start doing things outside of this choir because I'm like, if I'm listening, if I'm, if I'm orchestrating the choir, I know your voice is special, you know? So, right. I would think, I would think like (laughs) any coach, right. A coach knows like, Oh, this is my star player. Right. 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 right, right. Straight up. Right. So like as, as a, as an orchestrator, like I would know uh, this is my star singer. Honestly, I, it didn't happen that way for me. I think in church specifically, voices are so big. Mm. They're like a lot of runs, a lot of power and emotion. Mm. And I feel like I relate more to artists like Sade or Janet wh- who are soft spoken and right. sing more softly, but still have power and resonate with people. Um, but I actually didn't start as a singer. I started as a dancer, which okay. is another okay. silent sport where you can blend in. And I was a single child, the only child. So I felt like it was an easy way to kind of build confidence, but not in the forefront, like yeah. not in the spotlight. So I think maybe maybe football is kind of the same way like you it's like a team effort or soccer or anything where you're on a team versus mm-hmm. like tennis right or like yeah. you got other people to rely on yes yeah, yeah. yes you can kind of play on other people and learn from them um so i built a lot of confidence in in places that require groups yeah singing but and choir and dancing and dancers even even in those spaces like you mentioned like on a team right mm-hmm. a player like dude would still know like i'm exceptional at, at this <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, you yeah. like yeah, you would know who's sure. a guy I, I would know who's a guy like yeah. I, even, even though like we all help each other win like i still know like well if we're talking about who's the best at that position i'm the guy yeah you know yeah. so like you you still have to have that feeling right or I, no i i don't know like i feel like confidence didn't come for <laughs> a long time for me I, mm-hmm. I wasn't like like that person who was like put me in the front I'm, when yeah, I, no, I, I, I understand that yeah. you know it's, it felt different for me um but I knew that with with songwriting, it's a way for me to kind of use my voice and my ideas. But again, stand behind. It's kind of like, have you guys seen Wizard of Oz? Like mm-hmm. the guy in the, 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 what is it? The Wiz or the Wizard the, of Oz? Well, both. It's okay. a guy. He, well, both. Who, okay. He's like orchestrating everything yes, behind the scenes. Yeah, he right? didn't have to be the person, yeah. but he could kind of manipulate and show yeah. his great ideas yeah. and, and like still feel that gratification, but not have the pressure of, being the that person yeah um so i feel like i had a lot of that when yeah, did so that start like writing for you in high school i started writing in high school um i used to tell my grandma as a kid i wanted to be a triple threat and i don't know where i got that from but i wanted to be a singer dancer and actress yeah. like mm-hmm. it was something that i saw in musicals um i used to watch chitty chitty bang bang you know think all the disney movies um there was uh there was just a lot of musical theater mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, there was a movie called about Dorothy Dandridge that Holly Jer- Holly Berry played. Mm-hmm. Dorothy Dandridge, and I was like, you know, that that kind of life and that performance ability. I want that confidence, and I, yeah. I long for that. So one day, I'll probably, you know, build up enough strength to do that. Yeah, let's talk. Um, I want to know about your life in the music industry, mm-hmm. right? Because all I've heard for the longest is that the music industry is a shady business. Oh, for sure. And that uh, it's um, it can you can lose yourself in pursuit of greatness or pursuit of whatever it is. You know, I mean, there's very few industries where it's just like honest across the board. Yeah. And um, I want to know throughout your journey, songwriting, you know, performing, you know, dancing, even. Yeah. Right. Did you ever feel, or did you ever there was there ever a moment where you found yourself losing? like the essence of who you were Mm. oh for sure there's been plenty of moments um i feel like it's 
the moments where you feel like you need someone where it can be a little bit easier to persuade you to do certain things like mm. it it's like for lack of a better example training a dog like when the dog is hungry and wants a treat it's easier to make them do something versus you just fed him and he don't really okay. care so i feel like the same conquer happens when you're a, a artist in la and you don't have um a certain income yeah, yeah you just like okay whatever this person says i need to do to accomplish this let me try that route um and that can be opposite of what you plan to come here for hmm. and i'm not even just talking about i know the first thought is like a woman in la and sexual things but it's even about your art direction so like if you wanted to do r&b music and and, and anr says um and anr is someone that will like choose your music at a record label and anr says R&B music isn't making a lot of money. You should try pop music and like right. do this. You could totally shift your direction because you need mm. that. So um, I think it happens. It comes down to being independent and finding your own um, stability so that you don't you're not dependent on someone else's opinion of you mm -hmm. to survive. Is that mm. a good thing, though, or a bad thing? Because if 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 someone's able to look at the metrics and say, hey, this is what's working mm -hmm. and what you want to do as much as it's great. It's just not what's hot right now. Yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because it does take away from your authenticity, right? Yeah. So, like, which side of the fence do you kind of lean towards, you know, even just looking back on it and say, you know, I'm kind of glad I'm, I followed that. I lead towards authenticity. I think um, if ever you're doing something that your gut and your and your heart doesn't want to do, it's it's almost like you're, you're just playing a role. You're an actress or an actor until mm. you get exposed and it's not, there's no longevity in it. You can't mm. keep up this room for the rest of your life. Mm. So I feel like as long as you're authentic, what you are doing may swing back into popularity. Wow. And as long as you perfected it while you were waiting for it to swing back into popularity, mm. you, you're going to be successful. But if you switch, you're in a whole new territory and you can't, I don't think it's maintainable. Yeah. It's almost like going on a first date with a woman and you're playing, you know, you're doing like she kind of wants everything. <coughs> and you can't maintain that for 50 years of your life if you plan on marrying her. Oof. So it's like you might as well just be you, show who you really are and attract that that it belongs to. Yeah. Things that are are you're meant to have. Interesting. It's interesting you say you wanted to be a triple threat. <laughs> yeah. Actress, singer, yeah. dancer. And you know, if anybody follows Victoria on social media, you can actually see she does all <laughs> of those things. <laughs> and as you talk about authenticity, it makes me think about just your social media, the way that you kind of run it. I feel like you are in full control mm -hmm. of your social media, your creative ability and your creative influence that you have on your social. And I see you do commercials. You do you do a lot of visuals that correspond to the music that you yeah. make. And obviously, it's a lot of brown in there. <laughs> obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that's what that's the yeah. dead giveaway. To, oh, Victoria's yeah. in charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's the creative director on this. So one. like. When did you feel like you were just like, you know what? I need to take full control of everything that I put out. I can't sit back and wait for people because my perception of the music industry always was like, you know, if you really want to be big, you can't do anything until the label allows you to do it. Right. I feel like you kind of, you don't operate by that narrative. Have you always been that way? When did that happen for you? Um. Well, it's funny you say that, you know, the label kind of controls a lot of narratives because I'm not signed to a label. Mm. I'm an independent artist. I put a lot of my own money into things. Um, I decide on my own team. It's a lot of women, which women are incredible creatives. Um, and so I don't have to abide by certain rules because it's like, it's my, it's my shit, you know? Um, the boss. boss. Yeah. The boss. I'm yeah. the boss. You know, and I feel like a lot of times when you're, there's nothing wrong with a label because there's that's how certain people get to where to a certain amount of success but sometimes they don't have creative control until they get that success i think mine is maybe the reverse like i'm starting from my own opinion my own ideas and then hopefully maintaining success from that versus you know the reverse so. Yeah, no, it's definitely what he's saying is like evident as well as in even in just um the type of the the way you carry yourself, mm. you know. And I think that um in in this society that we live in now, it's really easy to push artists into being over sexualized and yeah. saying, "Hey, um, 
do this to sell this. Right. You know what I mean? Hey, this person is doing this, this person is doing this, and you want to be at the top of the game. And if you're not doing this, you're going to get left behind. But right. it does seem like you kind of are walking to your own beat. You For know what sure. I mean? And, and I think I, that. I, I mean, personally, I admire a sexualized woman if that's what she wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it feels empowering to dress a certain way, and I feel like that's fire if that's what she wanted to do. It's different if a label says, or a manager says, or anybody says, yeah. do this in order to achieve this. If that wasn't in your, on your heart to do it, that's not how you feel, it's not who yeah. you are, then that's a whole different, whole different and story. And even to take it a step further, right, how do you feel about, so the industry is less, I guess, harder on women that, yeah. you know, have, have children. Yeah. Or it's just like, women it's just, in it's, general, it's, really. yeah, it's just, a, it's just a difference, right? It's like, yeah. uh, you, you're not as like, I guess I don't know what the word is, but I think you know there's a thing that women there's a stigma with like artists that get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel that pressure of like, oh my god, man, yeah. like what am I gonna do? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Let's keep it real. Like, yeah, I, you know, I feel like especially in a pandemic. Like I got pregnant in a pandemic, so the world is already on pause. No one really knows what's gonna happen, and then you add a baby into it everyone's like well it's over <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean like your natural thought but i look at so many other examples of a fight now and it's so nice to have i look at cardi mm -hmm. i look at kaylani i look mm -hmm. at janae aiko mm -hmm. um and there's really great examples for me about you can still do it yeah who yeah. yeah and also i think social media allows for whoever thought pregnancy was a bad thing mm -hmm. that stigma can't control what people see anymore i can kind of mm. produce my own content and let the world decide mm. do you still like it or not or, or streaming services allow for people to select songs to listen to versus the radio just giving you whatever the head of this marketing company thought was playable because they're not pregnant you yeah. know what i mean like i feel like it's kind of more in our hands now um so, but it was definitely it was definitely scary um not an easy situation for anybody whether you're an artist or not in any job especially because our job doesn't really have like a Man. paid leave yeah. or like mm -hmm. e there's no like insurance 401k yeah. like the music industry is so like wild wild west As there's no like there's no manuscript Techni to follow no. technically an entrepreneur right yeah. you're technically yeah, an entrepreneur yeah, in the music space yeah, yeah. right especially Techni as an independent artist yeah basically. oh yeah. yeah yeah for sure so there's a lot of little um voices in your head that can tell you like this is how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and you you know whatever would discourage you but then there's so many other voices that are like well look i did it and you can be the first to do something if mm. it doesn't exist already and like entertain the thought of what if it does work out what if this is exactly what catapults you and makes you more relatable to millions of women across the world mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. need to see someone successful and do what you do with this tribulation mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. with this extra amount of work that you have to do you know i i think I, that was a good question duke asked because honestly when i think about having a child within entertainment yeah. i think about lauren hill and i think mm. about how she was really like ostracized for having a child at mm -hmm. the height of her career it's crazy which was super mm -hmm. crazy and 20 years ago it's a different time right it was a totally different mm -hmm. time and you know they 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 almost didn't want her to have the they didn't want her to have them, really. Yeah. And I still think one of her best songs actually came from that. The baby. Yes. Called Zion, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to ask you, how do you feel like motherhood has influenced your creative ability, your music, your artistry? Um, actually, for a long time, um, people would ask me as a songwriter, like, oh, you, gotta, you know, you're, what are you going to write about the baby? Or, like, expect this magnificent body of work because I'm – you know, I'm with child and it's the most beautiful thing that happened to me. But I found that writing about my daughter was harder than any other subject because I didn't feel like any lyric or beat or mm -hmm. song was worthy of mm -hmm. me talking about her. So I'm like, it was just hypersensitive, like extra hard to um, connect to certain things because I was like, this topic is more important than anything I've ever done. So I had to, I had to step away from it for a while and then kind of revisit it and feel less pressure about it mm -hmm. um but 
ultimately, literally, um, my daughter has taught me time management because, <laughs> nice. of course, like I used to be in the studio till two, three, four a.m. Like, but whenever the idea hits me, I'll just write <laughs> about it. Like, no, I'm like, I came here. We start now. I have With to, an objective. You know, yes. Let's I don't go. have time. Let's go. I don't have the time anymore. <laughs> hey, my situation and circumstances have changed. It's different. It's different. It's way different now. So, so people are just I, like hanging out in the studio. That's what it really is. So. 100%. You guys can it's, hear it's music not even, loud as fuck. It's, not, yeah. even, it's not even that I really be just doing music all sing every night, all night. It's just like. No. Th well, there's. it just depends on what session. Because, because some, I always wonder, I always wonder, like, why. I mean, why, we hanging out in the studio. I, I always wonder, <laughs> yeah. why. Because cause artists always say, man, we've been in the studio until 6 a.m. It's like, what why you, you in the studio at yeah. 1 a.m.? But I record. mean, honestly, I've seen I've seen it all. I've seen rappers who are not inspired until after the club event that they have to go to, uh. so they don't get to the studio till one a.m. Mm. and they're there until six or whatever. But and sometimes rappers just want to hear their music loud as fuck in the studio and just mm -hmm. dance around and get high and have different girls come around and see who vibes to what. That's mm -hmm. their that's their process. Mm. And if it works for you, it works for you. But some people. I feel like Bruno Mars specifically is an, a person who will come to the studio. You're going to do what you're supposed to do. And for weeks, they may be working on the same song, but they're going to perfect every little part of the song. Mm. It's just like whatever your process is. And it's a creative space, so it doesn't really, there's no real rules if you uh, got the budget to do yeah, it because studios right. are expensive. Come on. <laughs> but um, yeah, like all of it could work. Maybe Lil Wayne's process is different than Adele's, but mm -hmm. they both have smashes. I um I have a question. You mentioned writing about yeah. your daughter. Yeah. And it made me think about um uh, Jalan's introduction about you, how you've been a pen for the industry. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm sure you came to LA as a solo artist chasing a solo career, right? And but you came as a songwriter as well. Yeah. Right. How does a songwriter take a hit like thank you next <laughs> and say, I'm gonna give it to someone else? Mm -hmm. Like how do you do that as a writer when you're like, yo, I'm sitting on something that's so fire and I know this shit is gonna be a hit, but I, I'm gonna give it away to someone else. Mm -hmm. Or is that like a thought process? Like I'm very curious about like how that goes in the studio. Or does the artist come to you and be like, hey, I have this idea. Like how, do, how does that- Give me some. Give me some, some heat. Give me some heat. Yeah. Give me some heat. Like how does that go? It's, it's um, there's a lot of ways it can happen. For Thank You Next specifically, um, we spent two weeks in New York working with Ariana. She was in the midst of going through everything we wrote about. Mm -hmm. So we come to the studio. She has things about her life that, sh that are going on. And our job as a writer is to take those things and translate them to song form so that she feels she connects to the song. But also make it catchy enough or, you know, all of the things that the world would also you know, tune into. Mm -hmm. um, back when I first started, I wasn't in the room with an artist like Ariana, or I, I couldn't get to Diddy. I couldn't get to these specific people. So I was just writing about my life, and hopefully, someone would mm, take connect. it. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, my plan as a solo artist. Um, I keep bringing up Bruno, but he's he's one of my favorites. I I saw him. Shout out to Bruno Mars. Shout mm -hmm. out to Bruno Mars. Shout out to. You know, Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic. Mm -hmm. um, where that collab at? They got they got a little brown vibe too, though. Huh? <laughs> yeah, where they got nice little brown. This earth bitch got me panoramic. <laughs> <laughs> they're insanely, they are insanely talented. Um, but in my early writing career, um, I saw what he did, and he was on a hook with Bob, and that was his first smash. And after that. He what song was it? did his beautiful own. Girl. No, yeah, yeah, beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. Yeah, yeah, and he Who made the after that, song. he's incredible. He's incredible. So he kept writing, and from that hook gained popularity. It was a hit song. Then he took off. So literally, all I used to do, I was like, I'm just gonna try, try his, his way, because I was signed to Atlantic at the time, mm -hmm. and I just all I did was write hooks for like a good portion of my writing career, and I was like. I'm just gonna sing the hooks so good that hopefully a rapper will want to keep me on them. But if not, they can take take me off, replace it with a singer, and it'll be a placement at least. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I ended up getting the hook that you know me from Ti. It's crazy. That's a crazy story. One What's of it? A, a former teammate of ours, actually, TC Tony Carter, was like, "Yo, oh, you you gotta listen to this song." Um, T he was a big Ti fan. Mm -hmm. He was like, "Nip is on the song," 
And I was like, okay, bet, give, let me hear it. He was like, it's called All About Your Issue. And Victoria's <laughs> featured on it. She's singing on the hook. And for like the longest, for like two years before, prior to where I met her, it was like one of my favorite songs. And organically and, all, you know, just just life, you know, yeah. we end up meeting and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's that, crazy. I, that's, that's a reason why that happened is because I was just literally, I wasn't writing full songs. I was just writing hooks. So I got to T.I., I got to Nas, I got to... Um, Machine Gun Kelly. And they all kept you on there. They kept me. Yeah. So like I was like, maybe this is the way it happens. And um, slowly, you know, use my artist name on the hooks to introduce myself to more people. Um, but I was just looking at Bruno. Like, let's see how he made it happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just. Bruno get him. mad respect in the industry. Yeah. Just he's mad respect. He's like a he's like uh, a real. He's a true artist, man. Yeah. He does every. I've like never everything. heard one person ever say anything, anything bad, bad about like Tim Duncan. <laughs> 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 like Tim Duncan, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know Have what I'm gonna do every time live? I'm out there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen him live? No, nah, I, I, I gotta I do it. Yeah, I gotta do Before it. Before I die. He's. I mean, Silk Sonic is in Vegas right now. Maybe we should take a trip to Vegas. Me, let's mm -hmm. go. See, that's what I'm saying. You know what? On that note, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. That's my uh, invitation whistle. I forgot my whistle at home. But what's the deal, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. Um, excuse me. Welcome back to another episode of the Nice and Neat Halftime Show. I'm your host, Omar. We have a very special guest, Victoria Monet, in the house. Man, we sitting here talking <laughs> her background, her artistry, everything, motherhood, the whole nine, man. But you know, we got her on the show, so we got to introduce her to the game. Dim the rules. Dim the rules. Dim the rules. Duke, talk to us. What we got, fam? <laughs> All right, man. This is um, this is moving on the fly. This is moving on the fly. So okay. we got a different type of dim the rules this week. All right, special guest, special occasion. All right. Hello. And then this Dem the Rules, right? I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. It's gonna be this or that style, right? And all you have to do is just tell me which one you prefer. Hmm. All right. You have point like one second. Point to, one? No, no, just 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 tell us what you think okay. and we'll move on to the next one. Okay. Rapid fire. All right, Rapid cool. Fire. So And I'm the only oh, one. It's you, 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 you the special the guest. Yeah, then the rule. Well, well, we technically know the rules. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's like if we asking you what okay. the rule okay, is. Okay, okay. You know? All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it off with chicken or fish. Fish. Drake or Yay. Drake. Beyonce or Rihanna. B. <sighs> sneakers or heels. Ooh, sneakers. Okay. Ooh. Blazing <laughs> hot or freezing cold. Oh, blazing hot. Okay. No manicure for the rest of your life and no pedicure for the rest of your life. Ah! <laughs> oh, no manicure. Okay. Let's go with um, Netflix or YouTube. Netflix. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I don't know. You said that too fast. No, yeah, YouTube YouTube is crazy because you can look up everything on Netflix. Damn the rules. That's where yeah. nice and neat at. Come on. Yep. And your it? music. YouTube. Okay. And your music. And your music. Okay. <laughs> Cardio awaits. Pick weights. Cause you won't be too skinny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No tissue paper for the rest of your life. Like or no paper people? towel for the rest of your life. Oh, no paper towel. Oh, no paper towel. She gotta wipe her booty. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you picked <laughs> tissue paper. <laughs> no, okay. No, 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 <laughs> okay. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. You can, you, you can supplement. Okay. Let's go. Pancakes or waffles. This shirt does get caught up in the middle. Ooh, I think waffles a little crispier. Okay, let's go. That one has a fun. Cardi or Meg? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You about to have me on the internet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, women are... It just, and we're both. International Women's Month, I had to put you on the spot. Mm. Well, ooh, ooh. if I had to choose, if I had to, had to, I would choose a black woman. Meg. Ooh. Hold up. This is great. This is great. This is great. This is great. What? This is great. Do are we? Do we not consider Cardi black? She's Dominican. Dominicans are well. Well, I mean, you gave us the definitive. Let her, let, her, let her. Let her have it. Go ahead. Dominicans I don't want to have it. I don't, I don't want to have, have it. I don't want to <laughs> have, have it. it. <laughs> no, I think I think I think that's I think that's real interesting. I mean, in the sense of if we're gonna say black, as in just black as an African American. Or Dominican, I understand exactly what she's saying. Okay, so so we're saying that we're not considering 
tagging you. So you saying we give Dominicans the black pass culturally? Absolutely. But, but not, but not like they're not really black. That's what you're saying. <laughs> You know what's crazy? You about to have me piss off a whole. That's what you not. That's what you said. Okay, said, but now my question, my question is, do do all Dominicans consider themselves black? I feel like a lot of Dominicans. Yes, do consider a lot. Hey, I'm gonna tell you guys a story all that I've Dominicans just reading up don't on. Consider themselves black. Well, the way people say the slave nigga, trade was there, but people do say nigga a lot, and mm-hmm. it's acceptable and a it, lot. We, yeah. So. But like. So I just came across. Merlin Santana. Okay. Do you guys remember who Merlin Santana is? Yeah. No. Who's that? Okay. I remember that. Okay. Notoriously known for being Romeo on the Steve Harvey show. Romeo and Bullethead. And he was Dominican? He's Dominican. Okay. He's Dominican. So his real last name is Santana, and he chose, he purposely chose the last name Santana on the show. Romeo Santana was his character's name because he wanted to highlight that all Hispanics don't look like we think they do Mm -hmm. right and he considered himself a hispanic not a black Mm -hmm. you know so i guess that kind of like i guess plays to your argument you know about saying that they're dominican they're not black right is that that what we're saying what do they want to be called what do they i think they consider themselves black and hispanic mixed yeah see i I, like i think i i I think black is a culture Mm. personally that's why, like, I think black well, is a culture. And when I say black as in culture, I know, like, Duke's, Duke's not, he's not black. He's but Nigerian. He's Nigerian. Yeah. But so, I'm black. But he's, but he's black, black, though. Right? Because that's the culture. That, because that, that's, that's the culture. That's true. Yeah. Right? But, like, oh, you black. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know what I'm going to get at your house culturally on holidays. Facts. Like, what we're going to eat. Like, I know what's going to be true. there. Yeah. Like, you know me as a black man. Like me and Victoria, they never we ain't never have to go to each other's family. But y'all know what's gonna be there. But I know it's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's, that's the culture. True. Yeah, yeah. Well, Merlin, you don't know. I don't know what's gonna be at Merlin's house because I don't I don't know the Dominican culture like that. I mean, you may not even know what's gonna be at Duke's house, to be honest. Nah, for real. I mean, I that's a very valid point because I've seen online that people from Africa they they don't like to be called black. They're no. Like, what is black? You don't don't fuck that up. Yeah, like what oh, is man. There, there's definitely a um a distinction. Yeah. At, you know, some people really take that serious. Yeah. And this and it goes beyond just like, yo, this is not my culture. It's more of like there's a treatment thing there too. Mm. Right? It's just like, yo, I just we not the same. That does does that right. there's that like mentality. But let the record show that Victoria said she's gonna go with Meg the Stallion because she's black. Let's give it up for her. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait to bring us back in, dude. We were drifting. Hey, let, we were drifting. Hey, let the race show because hey, we were black. Let me not. Let me not. Hey, you want to get it off? No, 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 because that might be worse. It might just, I might just. We could always edit it. We could always edit it. We could always well, cut it. And it could be profound. What I is, I would choose Meg the Stallion because that's her ass. Okay. 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 Say no more. Say less. With that said, we'll conclude this <laughs> halftime show and get to the Please. rest of the show. You got to ask the like that. The only way we know how, that's with some positive energy, some positive vibrations. And a smile, of course, second half. Let's go, man. Come on, let's go. You know what? The first half was incredible. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Halftime was lit. I don't even want it to end. And we gotta keep it, we gotta keep it going. We gotta keep it going. I do wanna we're gonna we're gonna dive into more things, Victoria. But I yeah. wanted to ask you about actually one of my favorite singles, because you are a I think within your creativity, you're a marketing genius as well. Thank I'm gonna give you. you I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we've seen people copy things that you've done. We'll get into that. Oh, man. You know, mm-hmm. we've seen that. But I'm speaking specifically about one of your one of your most recent singles. It's called F U C K. Yeah. Right. So like when you see F U C K, it's very similar to like other songs where you see a word and it totally means something totally different. Double entendre. Double entendre. Right. <laughs> Double entendre. <laughs> so when I seen it, I wanted to listen to the song. Because of what, like, it's so, like, eye-popping, F-U-C-K. Like, whoa, what does that mean? Yeah. Right? The song actually is short for, for well, F-U-C-K is short for Friend You Can Keep. Mm-hmm. Where did the inspiration for that song come from? And where did the, the marketing behind that song come from? You know what? When I'm in the studio sometimes, I cannot explain it. And I and maybe you guys can work out when you guys can relate. They just pointed to them. I'll be working out too. <laughs> no, but no, no, no. But here's, here's, here's why. Here's why. I mean, you might be able to relate because when you're creating a workout, does it sometimes hit you like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I got this. 
Like, yes. It's like there's really no explanation. There's it's just like almost like a gift from God. It's like mm-hmm. boop, yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. And I that's what F U C K was. I don't necessarily remember the whole writing process of that song. It was just like one of those like why why hasn't this been done? Like mm-hmm. just let's just try it. And um I feel like in a lot of scenarios in my life prior to John was I'm not about to marry this person. We just Who, about to have who's who's John? Oh, John is my boyfriend, the mo- the father of my child. Okay. <laughs> Let's give it up for John. Let's give it up for John. Let's give it up for John, up for John give it up baby. Give it up for games by games. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good brother of ours, a good no, friend of, of, of the show. He's a good friend of the show. Yes. I'm yeah. glad you said John. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's very much nice and neat. Yeah. No, okay. for sure. <laughs> yes, sir. For sure. I'm, and, you know, I'm, you transitioned for us ever so eloquently. That's just who you are. <laughs> So you're now in the, you're in, you're in the industry. Yes. You have a boyfriend. You yes. have a child. Your life is completely changed from Way who Victoria different. Monet was when she yes. came in. How is it now juggling being a mom, having a full relationship? You guys live together. Yes, we do. having a relationship. You guys living together. You got being at the studio till two, three in the morning. Like, what does that look like now? <laughs> you know what? It's actually a dream come true. Like, I, I think. Naming all of those things could sound chaotic, but it's when you do it with the right person, it feels like easy. It's mm. like, okay, we communicate the same. And when we have a disagreement, it's very calm and we speak to each other like adults. I think we have the same temperament. Um, so it makes everything so much easier. It just, gl- it's like glaze. It just glazes mm-hmm. on over everything. Um, but I feel like, you have to have someone in a partnership that understands your vision. Mm-hmm. Um, if they look at you, I think people have a habit of whatever you introduce yourself as, that's what they try to pigeonhole you as. So for you, it'd be like, I met you as a trainer and you mm-hmm. told me you're an actor. I'm like, no, no, you have to be a trainer. Right. I think John understands in our relationship that you met me as this person, but this here's, here's where I'm trying to elevate to and take our family. And I understand that for him as well. So, mm-hmm understanding what we have to do and sacrifice to achieve those goals we we're on the same page about that and Mm -hmm. so it's really it's been very easy and supportive and gentle um in our relationship and it's been crazy like i did not expect in 2015 or 16 what anytime before i met him i didn't expect for this Mm -hmm. to be my life yeah well you because you said um it's crazy you said it's crazy but for some of us, who we are today and who we were five years ago and six years ago is two different extremes. Totally different. Right? But some some, some of us not. Yeah. Right? Do you feel like you were someone that was completely different? Or do you feel like you're kind of the same person, you were kind of going doing the same thing, and he just came into your life, and, you know, it, it, it kind of just makes sense for you. Mm-hmm. Right? But there's, like, sometimes it's just like, yo, Five years ago, I was in the streets, yeah, yeah, and like I didn't care about nothing anyone said, and you know my mindset was just super immature and things like that. Yeah, and now I'm here. Mm-hmm. All right, is that the same for you, or were you kind of like, did they overlap? I think I've had elements of myself, who I am today, in me always, mm-hmm. and it's always been something that I've written down and tried to achieve. Um, and today, I have a whole new list of things that I of the person I want to be in five years from now, Mm -hmm. 10 years from now. Um, But meeting John has been something that couldn't have happened any sooner Mm -hmm. and probably couldn't have happened any later. It's like the the perfect window of time and it's God's timing. It's like, it doesn't have anything, right? It doesn't have anything to do with you. You don't know why you're so, you know, divinely timed to meet this person now, but there's a reason. So Mm -hmm. I feel like five years ago, maybe we wouldn't have, connected and i honestly knew him a year before we were ever speaking in that way and uh, there's some people in your life like that like maybe you've known a person for 10 years and then you finally something in your life both of your lives changes Mm -hmm. and you your magnets at that point it can happen to any of us right Right. the whole time yeah for 10 years right Right. did you say that to me right (laughs) right you wasted a whole decade right there's a reason you had to go through all of those things before that moment to to have that moment flourish. And so that's what I feel like happened. It was just meant to be. Yeah. You know? Now, now John, John is a handsome guy. He's very handsome. So let's, <laughs> do you ever get jealous? Um, I've just like, cause, cause you know, he's a handsome guy. So 
you know you are who you are. Hey, yeah. hey, you, you, still... hey, hey, you know, you know a dude is handsome when a handsome dude is like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 he handsome, fam. I just gotta know. <laughs> you know no, but honestly... you know what I'm saying? Because like we all, we all, no matter who we are, yeah, and how successful we are, right? If someone's our person, we feel the type of way sometimes, Absolutely. right? Is it? It doesn't matter, front. right? So like, uh, not so much do you get jealous, yeah, but more so like, how do you manage those like? Feelings. That, that was, you know, when you feel some type of way about something, how do you manage those feelings? Because we all feel those feelings. I feel like there's so many things to say about this. There's so many things. But one thing that I will say is everybody wants something yeah. or someone that everyone else wants. Yeah, facts. Mm. It makes it more valuable. Facts. It's like if you put a tray of cookies out and everyone leaves them, you're like, mm, Something's wrong with those it's simple supply and demand. Mm. Yes. If there's if there's a lot available, I don't want none. Uh, if there's none available, I want it. I need it now. I want it. Matter of fact, I I'll pay for it. I have it. I'll exactly. pay for whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you also, um, I'm being friends with you guys and living in a culture where surrounded by friends where all everybody is on a certain level. I'm with your women and everyone's successful and beautiful and black and we're all dealing with these same emo mm -hmm. emotions yeah, yeah. so no one feels out of place we're all going through those yeah. Yeah, like yeah. little thoughts so i feel like that also helps surrounding yourself with friends who play on the same field as yeah. you yeah yeah you know so basic basically birds of a feather is that what yes. together? that's the same yes. that's the same, same. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay exactly speaking of birds of a feather mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> right transition because now now yeah. You've 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 told us you feel like you're in you're in really good company, yes. hanging out with hanging out with other women that kind of have like minded mm -hmm. and you know within this phase of your life you feel like this is the phase of your life that you could have met John in this phase yeah. not five years ago not five years from now five years ago what do you feel like was holding you back from meeting a John or meeting so just somebody that fit that criteria for you I feel like I wasn't at a level where I could make room for anybody else. I had to be at the studio for uh, till two and three. It's almost like I had to spend those 10,000 10, hours to practice doing what I do in order to complete the same task mm -hmm. at the same skill level in three hours mm -hmm. so that I can get home and focus on a whole other thing. But before that, before I spent that time developing my craft, I probably couldn't. So it was like, if I would have met someone that I wanted to spend my whole day with at that moment, I would have been sacrificing my whole career. career. But now wow. I could, I could wow. do both. I yeah. can hang hang with friends, and I could, you know, go on a brunch. I could spend four hours at the studio, five hours, I, and get home and give Hazel a bath. He sure spent like all of the things are. I've been practicing for this, basically. Mm -hmm. I needed more practice. Yeah, it's crazy you say that because when I met you, I I, I remember that. <laughs> I, like you weren't dating anybody. You were constantly in the studio. Like you really didn't have time. You were so focused on chasing your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, I mean, I, I'm glad you touched on that. You yeah. know, and and I'm glad you brought that to the forefront. That like sometimes you know timing is everything. It's timing. Yeah, timing is everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know? for sure. So f for the aspiring musician the mm -hmm. female musician who is just looking at you and saying man i just want to be like her yeah right and i just want to like every what everything she does is just like it's just it's so relatable to yeah. me you know what's one piece of advice um that you could give them um that's going to help their journey be a little more smooth like maybe it's a mistake you made yeah. that you're going to tell them hey don't make you know, or maybe it's something that you did that went really, really well for you. They say, "Help, make sure you do this." Yeah. What does that sound like? Um, it's really hard to sum it up because I've been chasing this. I I moved from home as a teenager, and I've been in LA for twelve or thirteen years. Mm -hmm. So I would a tell any woman wanting to do any of this to ask themselves, "Would you want this if I told you it was going to take fifteen years? Mm. Would you still want it?" Is it a timing thing? Like, what is it about this that you want? And I feel like the biggest takeaway for me is um, I feel like I took the streets. Like, you can take the freeway if you want to get somewhere fast, but you can take the streets and maybe learn a little bit more about the city that you're driving through. Um, you may be, in comparison, arriving a little bit later than everyone else who took the freeway, 
but you look you know so much more about where you've been mm. than everyone else who took the freeway yeah you picked up so many more tools you learned so much yeah that's yeah, a great so, analysis so i i mean are you okay with taking the streets and if the answer is yes then yeah put your whole 100 percent everything into it your money your time your energy everything what about okay what about that same aspiring female artist right she's like juggling her career and an intimate relationship yeah you know what i'm saying like and let's say she's 21 yeah you know <coughs> would you well, how, how would you like what would you recommend in, in, in a situation like that because that's the real thing for a lot of people you know i'm trying to figure out man this this is someone i love or i right. think i love right um or this is my career like I think everything is a balance. It's just like a well-balanced diet. You have to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Especially if you're writing your own music and you're creating your music, you're going to need the relationship ups and downs to be inspired to even go into the studio and make this or that. Yeah. If you're just spending 100% of your time in the studio, it makes it a little bit harder. You have to play a little bit more make-believe be make to accomplish the same content. So use whatever situations you're in as inspiration, but make sure you don't get it twisted that you're an entrepreneur and you have to allot your own time accordingly. Mm. So make sure you're in doing what you're supposed to be doing, but also enjoy, enjoy your life. Mm. We're about to maybe go to war. Like, <laughs> please enjoy your life. Seriously. Like balance. It's just balance. And you're so young, you know, and making mistakes. Yeah. You know, you're so young. So it's like, I, I would assume that if I'm talking to someone, I'm saying you're 21. I just hmm. focus on your career, bro. Right. You but know? it's crazy though, though like for me, my great grandma, my grandma, they got married at 16, 17 when they lasted the whole time. Why? Different. Different time. Different time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, um different time. Lack Social of accessibility. <laughs> yeah. Um we don't see each other's lives. It's different. Yeah. Like I think the accessibility is is the biggest thing. Hmm. You know, like back in, in that in that day, like even just thinking about communicating with one another, like if they, I don't know how old he is, but like they may not even had a phone, they had to Definitely send a postcard and wait for the postcard, the response. The response. Yeah. You know is what I'm saying? Patience? Is it patience? The whole. <laughs> oh, you had to have patience. Yeah. You had to have patience, and you had to really be like in love with a woman. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, you could just be in like with a woman and hit her and see her tomorrow. Hit her today mm -hmm. and see her tomorrow. Across yeah. the world. Across the world. I, yeah. could, I could meet a girl today in London and see her tomorrow. That's true. You know, where it was, so it's, it's just a little bit different. So the values, I think, are different. I think uh, uh, was right. Love letters at yeah. war. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> seriously. That's also, there's true. just more, much more opportunity for, like, women. You know, yeah. like women don't have to just sit around and just sit in relationships all day no more. No, seriously. You know, I don't, I don't have, you like, have to settle. And, like, you, and you guys have a choice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So my question to you guys is all of you being in amazing relationships. Do you feel like because of the access you have and the opportunity you have to just be like next makes your relationship more important and more valuable because it's so easy, easily disbarred? You know what I mean? Like. Because you're with who you with who you're with. Yeah, I feel like it, it it's um it's tougher to be in a relationship mm. and be faithful and mm. try to sustain your relationship right now. Mm. So it does make my relationship when I look at my relationship from the outside in, I'm like, yo, I have something special. Mm -hmm. I, I do feel like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like just like to be frank, like as a woman, you're gonna get a hundred DMs a day. Mm -hmm. as a woman mm -hmm. you walk out the house if you, if our, our all of our women are, are beautiful women you walk out the house you're gonna get a hundred guys talking to you every day yeah every day <laughs> you know what i mean every day and so it's just like that's a if think about all these people just constantly coming and coming and coming and like your woman having to navigate that you know although like you know there's a, there's a commitment there's still like a lot to navigate yeah you know what i'm saying and just from my our point of view is just like the same thing obviously not to the same extent where it's like 100 women coming at us but you, you know, know we do crazy? have access we do have that type of access where we're like we have that reach where it's just like hey yo i could go talk to whoever i want and be anywhere i want in the world and you know because because men are approachers or attackers right. or whatever like that so that right. would be my role right um to just like refrain from that though i'm pretty sure she's looking at us like yeah like i got something special you know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel. It's fire. Yeah, because it's, it's like, because it's so much access, because it's so much access, and the fact that you wake up every day and you want to deal with somebody, if that doesn't show you that that person is special, 
then I don't I don't know what will show you that some that someone special. Yeah. Like it's so easy to have a three week relationship with somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but like when you like like somebody day after day, they do something that you don't necessarily even like, and you still like them, and you're like, I just want to get through this with you. Right. It's a that's a totally different ball game. And when I found out that my girl, I was like. Oh yeah, we we're gonna do this. We got it. Yeah, we're gonna do this. Cause it's I like mean, you're gonna you gonna get frustrated with everybody. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I felt that. Everybody. <laughs> you're gonna get it's frustrated. Not one person. It's not one person you're gonna get you won't get frustrated with. But no, like when so you real. get frustrated with somebody and it's like, cool, I got that off my chest. Dang, I still want to be here. But I still choose you. Yeah. Yeah, I still want to be here with you. Like yeah. I still want to be here with you. You know what? I'm frustrated. Even I'm, mad. You'd be pissed. I'm, gonna I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. I'm, I'm not right. going. I'm be mad right here. I'm be mad right here. But I'm hot. Like, I, I, for me, it was like, even in the midst of frustration, I was still learning things about mm, myself. Of course, of like course. I learned how to like really exercise patience because I I wanted to. Right. Not because it was like this is just what's good for her. Let me just do it. Blah blah blah. You know. Let me go through the motions. It was like nah. Like. I really want to like I, I really want to learn why I'm getting why I'm getting frustrated and then I really want to learn why I could prevent uh, prevent me from getting frustrated so it could prevent you, you from getting mm-hmm. frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like it's just, it's just it's just a different ball game. Like yeah. if you like somebody every day, like you should only like them. Yeah. Like you should, right. <laughs> you shouldn't want to be with somebody else. Yo, right. um this this episode has been awesome, but what I really would like to do is just tie it all the way back in before we get up out of here. And I know this episode is about like how to reinvent yourself. So yeah. like quickly before we get before we exit, I would like all of us to just go around and just one piece of advice on like to those listening and watching on like one thing that you could say that could help someone reinvent themselves. Yeah. If you guys don't know anything, I could go ahead and crack it off. You yeah, go ahead to go first. I think for me, because I'm currently going through a transition myself, you know, I think using your social media platforms, so just things that we communicate on a day-to-day basis, um, using things in your favor to show people how you want to be seen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you're trying to reinvent yourself, like let's just let's just use our example that you said earlier today, right? Right? Like you said you met me as a trainer, yeah. and I told you I'm acting now, right? So now because I use social media, I would like to use my platform to showcase what my acting doing. skills, yes. Right. So I don't want to necessarily show all the time just this training shit because right. it's not what I want to be known for. Right. So right. if you want to be known for something, you have an awesome tool in your pocket that could let people know before they even talk to you, even say a word to you, which how you feel about your passion, your career and things of that sort. So for me, that would be my one message, one one piece of advice to anybody that's listening, that's trying to reinvent themselves is just um, show how you want to be perceived, you know, because I think that's half the battle. Right. Yeah. What about Facts. you? I mean, that's a great, a great, great, great piece of advice. Um, I think it's all of it's it has to do with branding, it, you know, and consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, so even before that, I think my step would be um, writing down the person as if it's a character on a video game, the person that you want to be mm-hmm. and then thinking backwards, like what does this person wake up and do? Yeah. What does this person mm-hmm. eat? What does this person drink? How do they act? How do they go about the day? Who who are they surrounded by? Mm-hmm. And just work backwards from there and then schedule your day that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it'll go into your your piece of advice. Yeah, you yeah. know, social media. Then it'll just be it'll just be, you know, a certain flow that you start to get in the habit of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. like creating you creating like an avatar. Yeah. That's just yeah, that, and the, yeah. you're in the metaverse. Who do yeah, you want to be? An today? Avatar. And and wake engineer. up and do that. That's yeah. great. That's great. Um, man, that's a good one right there, bro. I think that a piece of advice that I would give just to to help someone reinvent themselves. One, I would say, detach from um, other people's expectation of who you are. Mm. Yeah. A bar, all yeah. right, a bar. Because oftentimes we conduct ourselves with other people's opinions in mind right mm-hmm. and oftentimes that can influence our behavior mm-hmm. and it can it can stop us from taking action a lot of times mm-hmm. because you're fearful of what they're going to think and it's directly correlated to what you're saying about like hey i'm a trainer i'm now an actor mm-hmm. so i'm going to post me reading all these scripts but now i'm not going to do it because these people know me as a trainer uh, oh yeah. that's a tough yeah. right yeah. so that's paralysis because it you know, it prevents us from moving. Yep. Wow. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big, a huge one. And then the other thing is I would say 
focus on the small steps Mm -hmm. instead of the end goal yeah right it's important to have an end goal right we all have a vision board but let's focus on like the action board Mm -hmm. you know like the the steps the step one to get to step two step two to get to step three and the small things to create those daily habits you were talking about right because then we create those daily habits and then it becomes like second nature Mm -hmm. so now posting that acting shit I'm not even thinking about yeah. it. Think about it. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let it fly. This is my I'm, life. I'm not yep. even, I'm not even thinking about it. It's just like posting anything else. Right. Um, and it's the same way it was when we playing ball, same mm-hmm. way you do when you're training, same mm-hmm. way you do when you were cutting. It's just, it's just how it is. It's you know becoming, what I mean? So yeah. those two pieces of advice is, you know, detach from other people's expectations and then, you know, focus on the small steps instead of the big That's ones. That's beautiful. Fire. So, Bring us home. I like how everybody did. I'm going to say Victoria is the first step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Two. you're the second step. Three. I'm going to say Duke is the fourth step. I'll be the third step. Okay. 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 I'll be, I'm going I'm to go ahead and insert, <laughs> insert myself in there. Um, you are who you are until you show people something else. Right. Okay. That's just what it is. So until you put on paper, who do I want to be? you have no idea Mm -hmm. until you do that. You have no idea, Mm -hmm. right? Once you put it on paper, you start carrying it out. Then you actually go Mm -hmm. into saying like, Hey, yo, I'm this. And then you become this. And then you actually don't care who people think you are because you Mm -hmm. actually live that life. Right. So like me and Duke talk about this all the time, like all the time, at least once a month we talk about it. You know, Duke's Duke, Duke is a, fashion icon that's mm-hmm. just who he is Not icon mm. he's an icon Duke, don't okay. don't diminish yourself <laughs> like that icon. hey we're gonna edit that out duke <laughs> is a fashion icon now people's like oh yeah this is the creator of law 17 right facts because he had to go ahead and put it on paper became it showcased itself as that and then didn't care what nobody else thought he used to be that's right nice. that's nice it's so crazy like do you do you realize like if you ever reinvent yourself, you can notice that people, like say people in football called you O, mm-hmm. or or Bolden, mm-hmm. your last name, mm-hmm. and now they call you O. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell what section of your life you were in by what they call you. Facts. <laughs> like, oh. So real. That's so yeah, real. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so real. <laughs> it's like okay, but the, the thing I relate <laughs> to about it is is watching Genius mm-hmm. when everyone thought Kanye was just a producer. They were like. Bruh, give me them beats. Like, I don't care about what you're rapping about. Yeah. And it just shows you how little minded people are based on their perception of you right. and what you know internally that you are. So just fucking go for it. But not Be even a genius. just not even just their perception <laughs> of you though. That's just their life experience. True. My life experiences tell me football players can't rap. Ah. Right. True. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. Or athletes can't rap. That's what my life experience. So now yeah. if I get a Damian Lillard that's coming out and saying, Yo, I'm a rapper too. While I'm in the NBA, yeah, I, my life experience is going to tell me he's trash. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So was you Shaq. I mean? like, so was Shaq. Yeah, okay. Right. But yeah, it's, it's got part bars, of that. Though. But bars. like, it, it, what it God, is, we're, what we're it is, we're going to wrap it up right now, Dammy. But what it is is, um, not having imposter syndrome. Right. Right. Like you said, believing that you are what you're aiming to be. And right. once you get that down, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's, it's a wrap. <laughs> but yo, check this out, man. Victoria, thank you for blessing us thank today. You guys. Um, thank you for just coming on and rocking out with us, man. We really appreciate you. Um, we just want to celebrate you uh, for this International Women's Month. You know, thank just highlight you. all the things you've done and just being an amazing individual and just being one of our friends. Um, so right. thank you. We just want to acknowledge that. Thank um, you, y'all. Make sure <laughs> that you go. Tap in and follow us on all platforms, right? At Nice Need the Podcast. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to YouTube, subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Make sure you follow Jalan on Instagram at just.jalan, Omar as well at omar.bowden, and Victoria on Instagram at Victoria Monet, yes, right? That's right. Okay, and myself at Duke. Um, really, really appreciate you guys for rocking us, rocking with us. Much love, much gratitude. Until next time, I'm Duke. I'm Victoria Monet. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat. And that's that. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand.